versus Vietas Poe. Okay then, game number two, all on the line for Virtus Pro. They want to stay in this upper bracket, they want to face Team Liquid in the next round. Well, they'd like to play someone else, I'm sure, but they have to play Liquid if they want to go through uh, to the semi-finals of the upper bracket. It does guarantee, the winner of this series is guaranteed a top six finish at the International. And LGD, PSG LGD, are just one game away from doing that as we get into our, uh, our second draft of this quarterfinal. The uh, chat room is already coming out in my ears. Of course. I love it. That was definitely that was Pasha. That the yeah. Pasha or Pasha <laughs> or Roger, they usually do it in two. <laughs> the fact that we know exactly. What uh, it's fantastic. It's Here we go then. Uh, into the draft of the early bands. I think we can. I don't think those ones at the bottom are actually bad. No, I think I you think can ignore the bottom two yeah. on the right yeah. hand yeah. side yeah. of the screen. Yes, that's legacy draft from the last one, so yep. you can ignore those. So but Tiny gets banned by VP this ah. time, and Venge and Marana are still left, so is the Drow Ranger. They, they, they value Tiny really highly then, they first picked it, yes. and now they banned it. I think maybe it was the... Wow. Here, there's a Weaver pick. I think also, I think uh, LGD's Tiny is really, really good. I think Somnus yeah. and Chalice have been beasts on the hero. Yeah. So I think that might be why they're Fair giving enough. them respect, and that's why they took it in the yeah. last game. Weaver first pick. Mm. I don't know how sold I am on that. They take Venge right after then, right? Yeah, they, they should. Makes a lot of sense. I'll tell you what's Double interesting armor. is um, there's no Necro ban. And Ten the only reason seconds. I bring that up is because Virtus Pro banned it 14 times in the group stage out of 16 Five games. I think they're getting more used to it. Like we saw even last game, they didn't ban it. Nope. Too. They didn't ban it at all. It got third pick, so it seems to be lower in priority than it used to be. Teams are getting more used to versing it. There's a lot more counters that are being figured out. Uh, we saw some Shattered Demons against it. We saw some more Edge before us getting banned was being played against it. Even Spirit Vessel. Ah. Been a bit of silence and action. We've seen uh, some of this already. Amazing hero versus Bane. Every time he grips anyone, you just go over silence, and the hero is practically useless in team fights after that. You also can't triple leap. If you get the last word on you, you yep. pop your one leap, and one your leap silence, you actually can't pop the far further ones. It's it's a really obnoxious hero to play Mirana versus in most situations, and it complements really well with Weaver, because you can just, you know, you skitter into the fight, you pop your global with the bugs, and the, that's where the minus armor starts ticking in right away. But, but it's honestly just silence that, like, almost every hero in the game hates playing, and yeah. the stupid curse and the last word, it's, like, just so annoying. And I think in this tournament, it actually has become, like, a first ban and the first pick as well very underrated aspect you actually get the vision with the last word too so yeah and like you're ganking this hero like in the side lane you know they're going to play around the trees in the fog well you you know you see exactly where they're going when you get it on them it's yeah. flying vision right or is it it's like track -ish vision it's kind of like, i think it's, it's just like, like an aoe vision around it i don't know if it's yeah. flying it's not flying around i'm entirely sure you don't might, right? might be i mean that's yeah I'm not too sure about that one so they go for the bane again though on bp but they do yeah. open mirana so they ban out the drought this time yeah Hmm. I think draw in general is just very good against the Bane, and like picking it into a draw is always a very risky in my opinion. So this game should be way better for him, and of course they have the Mirana combo, sleep into arrow. Yeah. Pretty much kills either of those three heroes right now. What did they face is void. Of course the Weaver counter number one for me. Like there's no better hero against Weaver, in my opinion. Agreed. Like, every time you crown him he's dead. You just remove the mobility out of the aspect of the hero, which is yeah. everything. Which is everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they, they do it again. They're really committed on this Bane combo with the Amirana. And this is... Okay. Wow. That's a way to disrupt the combos. It's Snowball really good. It's really good here against yeah. that. Yeah. Seconds Bane and Kunk, it's amazing. Yeah, and Amirana. As someone gets five second arrow, someone gets X, someone gets grip. The, the Tusk is just fantastic here. Yeah. It's a really strong pick. I've kind of forgotten too. I don't think there's been seen too much play in this tournament, has it? I saw FY play it. I did get to see him play, and he was extremely farmed. And they were that game they set up with the Zeus, so they looked for like a global ganks to enable this tusk. Right. Very, right. very popular yesterday when I opened my Dota Kings as well. I got, what? I got three tusks. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if anyone wants to swap a couple, huh? which MMR was that? Uh, sub one K. <laughs> No reply from the boys on the panel. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you're right. It, it's, uh, it's not been a, a massively popular pick mm -hmm. um, so far. So it's the Call Me Rana, pretty much. Nine, nine games, 55% yes. on Tusk so far. In the 55 for nine games? Yeah. Pretty, pretty good. Mm -hmm. only a select few people that have been playing it. Yeah. yeah. Got banned four times as well. 
think it's kind of like a signature hero of some players. Like uh, Windstrike played in both their games yesterday, uh, a few days ago in the tiebreaker. And the Rice King comes back onto the board. Very interesting, because I, I would consider both Tusk and Weaver to be quite strong against the Rice King. Yeah, yeah into Weaver, yeah, they're like the mana burns. Can't Probably off in Rave King then, right? If you pick it like this. Yeah. yeah. Like it can't be a carry. I think they want a safe, reliable, just Ten straight stun to, to come yeah. in right now, because there's are really relying on like landing a torrent after the Bane sleep and all that. Five, and then they do a lot of stun. Bit, right? hmm? so have you seen Pash Plan? Yes. Pash he, Mirana? He was, oh, the Wraith King. Man. Yeah, oh, the Wraith King, King, yeah. yeah I, he was one of the guys playing it a lot in pubs leading up to this event. Like, okay. I was kind of saying, like, oh, you know, what, what heroes are people going to play based on the NA yeah. pub meta? He was spamming Wraith King. Yeah, hasn't played it yet in competition here. Uh, the Wraith King last time Virtus Pro played was Ramses. Well, he hasn't played Enigma either, but busting out all the new heroes now. Yep. Yeah, he's now up to 14. 14 different heroes played, Pasha. I'm pretty sure he just wants to snatch the top spot. 14. 14. That's in 18 high. games. Mm -hmm. This feels like a bit like VP going back to their roots. Like, get some safe, stable comfort picks, and then just last pick Ramsey. So yeah. give Ramsey's the, the win condition. The Kunkka plus Wraith King could prove to be a little bit annoying. These two tanky frontliners, you throw a rum on top too. Yeah. Terror Blade. Ooh. No. I love that hero. Tower is pushing. That means it's often Weaver. You know who else loves that hero? Amy. 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 Yeah, Amy, Amy. loves that. Amy, yeah. Amy. What's it? How do you actually pronounce it? I don't know. So for a Tower Blade, something you can always do versus Bane is you can remove the sleep off of yourself, which is yep. really convenient. Like, if you have your Illusion present, you can always take that quickly off of people. That can be very nice. And versus Wraith King, you get your, the aura for your team when you pop the Reflection. Yeah, and, and come mid-game, they don't really have any heavy burst damage against the Terror Blade either, so the Sunder will always come off pretty much. They have a Global Silence to make sure of that, and they have a Snowball as well. Played it twice during the group stages, one win, one loss. So that means it's going to be Chalice playing the Weaver, yeah. and Ame playing Terror Blade. Yeah. Did, did Sumnus play was, Weaver it, mid before? Uh, oh. It was Ame on the uh, Terror Blade last time, sorry. Not. Did, did he play Weaver mid already? Uh, maybe. Uh, they, they did not, no. They did not? They've only played Weaver three times, all of them on Chalice. Mm -hmm. They banned Storm again. Gotta respect that maybe Storm. They want to give him a last pick again. It's annoying versus Kanka and Bane. Even though you, you're just your animations are slow, right? You've got to yeah. be your wind up before you get the lockdown initially. What is a good summoner here? Here, like something like Dragon Knight, maybe. Well, I would. Yeah. He's, he's favorite in the Lena. I think even stage. Yeah, Quop or Ember could be good. Something just a bit more flashy, a bit more mm -hmm. explosive. You're likely laying against Mirana. Ember's pretty good against Mirana. Yeah, I would agree. Maybe. I'd like something to start the fight. Because right now they're relying on like Toss. I would like the Ember or the DK. Yeah. Like Sumnus is one of the best DKs, right? Like he always gets really fat. He gets really farmed. He farm prioritizes pretty heavily on it. Yeah. I would just like to have like a tanky hero for them in the front lines because right now they have Weaver as well as TB. Yeah, like they've got the saves in the global, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. Especially because we assume this Weaver will go Agonims too, because Chalice, is, I think Chalice has done like the Fusal Agonims most of his games. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely on board with the maybe Ember anyway. His Ember is just amazing. Mm. Do you know what he hasn't played in the group stage? He's an Invoker, which I find quite surprising because a number of the mids have experimented through the group stage. Man, we hoped for it too. We were casting yeah. a game that like. One of the games that didn't matter so much, depending right. on what they did in the bracket. Oh, and it they didn't bust fun. it out. No, yeah. he picked Tween of Pain. We were like, oh, come on, man. No, that's also one of his signature heroes as well. Yeah, and it is Lena. Lena. Okay. Yeah, they go back for that. It's uh, the most popular picked mid four, maybe, in the group stage. It's just a bit scary if you go up against Mirana and any rotation comes in, you pretty much just die. Like, X mark into area dead, sleep into area dead. That's why I would have liked to see the DK. But I'm, I'm pretty sure the task would just play around mid lane then and just protect them. Mm -hmm. So what are they going to pick for Ramses? It, it also, this gives them a, they've got like this, this nice like Tower Siege too that can also benefit off the ch uh, the bugs from the Weaver. Lina is this mixed damage dealer with yeah, the Tower Blade. Yeah. a very, very hybrid hero. Now we have a lot of problems to solve for VP. What is it going to be for Ramses? Yeah, it's like there's TP got picked up, which you have no counter for, but there's also a, a Lina. A Lina. Who could have a Weaver game. too. Got to solve a lot of problems. Yeah. At last, we've got to make up for a lot of weaknesses right now. And when it's ram when it's like your carry positions to make up for problems, it tends to lead to, you know, you're, you're in a tight position in the draft. Yeah. Usually what you want to have when you have last pick, you want to have a very uh, very well-rounded lineup, and then your last pick is just like, wins you the game. But I can't really see one particular hero right now that really does that. Is that Brood Bandit? Yeah, first yeah. first phase. 
they can be flexible because it was actually a team mauling into the enemy team but to me now with Alina being picked up that means it kind of has to become Chalice's role where he might even build into one of these earlier like Dragon Lance and the Aghanim Scepter possibly he has to be the guy that has that tank role for the team as we just see Solo TP out of that danger up in the top side so yeah we'll see if he's going to be able to get into that uh, those items that keep that Weaver that much more oh, survivable uh, Roger in the meantime going to be doing what we've seen more and more often nowadays pulling that creep wave back behind the tower and trying to deny out a good bit of CS but with the silencer chasing him he's actually forced to just take it through the river and all chalice now it's a trouble yeah, he really those bugs. Bugs. and instead the shards from FY able to keep him alive the salve up to walk away and now solo not able to secure the kill onto the tusk fantastic save there from FY chalice just Really dangerous spot to be in with bugs level one. Yeah, not the easiest for a, a weaver. You really want that early Shikuchi to help secure range creeps with the heavy damage that it has, and so he'll be struggling until he hits level two. Meanwhile, down here bottom, X Nova on a hero that's known for a lot of early game harassment, but it does feel like the kill potential is going to be there a little bit later on for VP on this combo that they love to run. Yeah, and look how much gold and experience they're getting right now because of where they've gotten this lane. Uh, we noticed in a lot of the, the games during the group stage, the team's getting that bane early. It means that you can stop this pull from happening, where you secure the lane near your own tower. Nightmare is so good at stopping anyone from doing that irritating pull. And uh, with it on the side of Virtus Pro, them and LGD had no real option with just a silencer. And they are instead going to be able to find the other pull, which is the pull into the off lane, secure their lane equilibrium back into their favor. Looks like Chalice is going to come over, having gotten that level 2 and just gonna put the hurt to him a little bit. Uh, so yeah, things to watch There's out There's definitely kill threat on Solo here. He's playing very aggressively. And the bugs are on him now. The shards, they go out. They don't last all that long, but with the Nightmare, the runaway, they're getting the body blocks in Solo. Once this Nightmare dissipates, he's gonna have another round of Sakuchi and FY saying, come and fight me. I'm on a battle with you, man. And they are going to... Deny, deny, deny. A hit on the whole <laughs> chalice. He finds the kill. And my heart's beating a little fast after that one. Yeah, when you're playing this vein, you're trying to get trades going. You want to be very active in the lane versus your opponents, trying to abuse your brain sap, but clearly Solo just got a little bit too ahead of himself there. But it was a little bit of space for uh, an unharassed Ramses to farm under the tower. They still try and put the zombies onto the Weaver. It doesn't really work that well with the snowball on him, and instead they're going to turn the damage back onto Ramses. The minus armor and the punches, they go out another nightmare, but traded in over Chalice, also in the area. But the <laughs> Pumps from Ramsey's get off me. Well, the crit wasn't very effective on the bug on him, but on the bug skittering around, much better. It's just one of those things with the Weaver, you know, not a ton of HP, a lot of survivability in other ways. The silence, so it won't hit onto the torrent, and that means there's no arrow either. Nice play by X Nova. Yeah, it's still just laying into Roger here. Is Roger living? Oh, yeah, he's gonna TP away, and the punch! He got him! X Nova! Not giving up on the play. That puts him now at four stolen empty runs right back into Pasha. He's rotating on over, uh, trying to secure that four-minute bounty rune. Or, sorry, four-minute rune in the river. And looks like he will get it. Is that the new mount as well? Super pretty. But Pasha will pick up the illusion and leap away from trouble. He's going to TP out of there as well. Two heroes forced to use this TP in the bottom lane. And yeah, now what he's hoping for. And you can see here the replay of our uh, beautiful crit here. The bug on top, yeah, it gives it a little crit, but that bug shakes it off pretty well. Chalice, unfortunately, able to do the same thing. Solo just constantly harassing through the same, uh, the entire fight with the Nightmare, kind of controlling up this Weaver, and boom, 200 damage. Let's go pretty good about that one. Oh, look at the smile. Oh, no one in trouble here back in the game with the sun now going. Already now on the Somnus, they pull the snowball in further forward. Can they get alive? No. Somnus gets the kill on no one. That's great. great. Yeah, excellent initiation from FY there. The way that he doesn't just go in with the snowball and use the shards at the same time, he's spacing out his spells there, waits until the, the concoction's being used, and then he can kind of play around that with the snowball, which is, uh, honestly, even though the alpha is picked after, it's a very telegraphed stun, so it can be very handy to have a tusk on your team versus it, especially with how important it is now, where you go for this radiance, then straight into the blink on the alpha to try and be active with that uh, cooldown talent. FY. On the snowball on the solo needs to be careful. The fairy fire's there. They bring in another, and this might be some more damage. The nightmare, the punches. FY is dead. They traded over the nightmare, actually. Now solo able to retreat. Chalice still chasing. Somnus has Laguna Blade. This should be a very easy pickup for them, but they lost solo. Yeah, long rotation for the Lina, though, so no one is just getting a little bit of room here to get level six for himself after this catapult. 
he's even just gonna run away, just staying in range, a little bit worried about any rotations here with that Laguna Blade being there. He does get level six with that Cowardy as well. Has the Radiance eyed up for himself. And now five to two, still very even. It was looking really good for LGD, but a couple of solid moves, those rotations uh, from the Bane have put them back on a solid footing. Yeah, pretty serious XP lead for the side of LGD though. It's getting up there. It's about 1k at the moment right now. Pacha just got into level 4 versus uh, the level 6 Terror Blade, so not a lot of threat on Ame here. He's still holding the point in case he gets ganked for the potential Sunder. Likewise, also holding 6. Not wanting to make that play yet. Roger's going to get ran away yet again, and the shards block off. Nice play there from FY. They Where did this guy come from? <laughs> All right, apparently he didn't know he was there. The arrow from Marana, though, is going to keep Roger alive. Just helping out a teammate. Good save there, but FY did get down some very deep vision. With the angle he returned back towards Roger, they might go scouting for that, but it's a pretty hidden board. It's not in the typical deboarding area near the shrine. Light strike right connecting there onto no one. And threatening the kill always with that huge amount of burst damage that you've got on Alina if no one's stuck around for too long. But he's just going to head off, farm out the jungle. This is what the Alchemist wants to do, and we'll see if any heroes try to rotate to take over mid. It looks like, though, FY is going to come and contest his farm in the jungle here. This is not what an Alchemist wants, and Somnus has a haste turn as well. They spot out no one in trouble here as he does have his stun. Laguna Blade, everything thrown out. He turns the stun back around. Ramsey shows up now, throws out the Wraith Fire Blast. They have the X as well with a follow-up torrent. This might end up being a death maybe. Now Skelly's finisher off there, and... A bit too deep there. It's, it's hard to judge a good ALF game right now after what we saw this morning. One of the best ALF games you're ever going to see. But even being this far ahead, about a 700 gold lead over the next uh, highest hero, which is actually his own ally, uh, no one's looking very good. I don't think it's quite as devastating as an ALF pick as our previous match. But Pasha, he's out of mana. Trying to leap away. FY again, just back here behind enemy he lines over and over. Tower. He keeps he's finding, if, if not just Giant's annoying somebody, then finding kills. Completely owning this side of the map, and Roger just not really having the same impact right now. He's sitting under a ward, just trying to help with some uh, double stacks here for his Alchemist. Nice, cute play here, but FY is going to ruin it by running up here, and that's going to secure the fact that there's definitely a ward there. Yeah. We also saw Solo for a little while farming Ancients on the Bane with the bugs on him, where Skeleton's still sticking around. So he's getting whatever value out of the map is at all possible right here by VP. Eight minutes in, it looks like DSG LGD gonna farm up the stack that was lovingly made by Virtus Pro. Solo sees the Lena, and well, the Snowball also coming in, it sounds like. Over towards the side, they find themselves a catch here onto the Kunkka. He is so far behind, he's gonna lose more in. This is hard on a strength roamer like this. It's now eight stolen for X Nova. Oh no! The Nightmare Dodge. Is it gonna keep him alive? Or are they gonna be able to find the kill rather? This Invis rune. They're turning it back around. Solo may be in trouble. They try and smoke to run away, but the crit is there. Ramsey's able to turn this one. Chaos in the jungle as they're going to be able to find themselves solo and FY just trying to run away, but there is going to be an X. And it looks like they're going to be able to take down FY's Maybe, husk. though. Also caught Dyer's at the Roche Pit possibly? trying to run. I mean, he's, he's still getting away from them for the moment. The punches are coming. FY making a lot of space. And eventually the snowball continuing to make sense. Yeah. Are you kidding me? FY surely not. All right, yeah, he gets brought down to the end. Ooh. Just narrowly getting the vision. He's making them work for it. This is a very brawly game number two. It feels like there's little tiny skirmishes happening all around the map. Yeah, LGD are doing a great job of putting this pressure on the Alchemist territory. It's not a total free frame right now. He's not just getting away with everything, whereas Ami kind of is. He isn't had to be involved very much at all. He's just down this bottom lane, going between the lane, back to the jungle, and even though he's a thousand gold behind an Alchemist, that, that's an Alchemist, you know. He needs a little bit more. Enzi's getting very low, but does manage to escape. Caught there in the Moonlight Shadow. Chalice still trying to push a little bit. It looks like Roger is going to be able to get this room, but there uh, is a Sentry Ward. And now with Moonlight top. Shadow wearing off, Roger is going to be ran at by top. this Tusk. There's also a Nightmare on the other side on the Terra Blade. I'm sure if X Nova had a TP, he would be here right now to steal this, but unfortunately he doesn't have one. Zora so comes out. They also find another kill on Pasha. Chalice is going to secure this finish onto Roger. He's still trying to run away. Sakuchi to chase. And the punch. And they killed Tasha way deep. 
up near the tier two, he actually went down, chasing him the entire time that they were chasing after uh, FY2. Man, that value ward from the Tusk, it still remained there the entire yes, time. That was an excellent one to get, and they didn't even try a D ward even after uh, the play from FY to come and stop the stack happening from that camp right there. So, uh, BP just, a lot of the support's been playing from the top half too. So, like, there's not an opportunity for Solo to get down here and go for those D wards, and at this point, you don't really want to spend uh, 100 gold of your sentry to then miss the ward. And that ward is actually just spotted. That sentry was pinged oh. down instantaneously. But uh, quite in range. they might know there's an observer ward now, too. Uh -oh. well. Yeah, I can see X Nova pinging it. He knows there's one in this area. I think he's going to get it. Yeah, very nicely done. Great vision here from PSG LGD. The warding game, X Nova, again, the panel talked about it. One of these players that's been brought in and was able to help them secure the great DPC results that's led him to being in this tournament. Still making the plays here on the big stage as. We continue to loom closer and closer towards this Alchemist Radiance timing. And stuns thrown out there onto FY. He's getting very close and does have the relic already. And Ramsey's also trying to get involved in this game. He's just going straight for the blink dagger after the ring. So he's getting a little bit of armor on himself. And then with a the blink on him, he'll help secure a couple of team fights, hopefully, for the side of Virtus Pro. At least that's what he's thinking. And then that'll allow the blink dagger to be constructed on no one. And at that point, it's going to be quite the force just hopping on top of this Alchem or this uh, Terror Blade. Speaking of Terror Blade, him and Chalice are in the area and going to start to put the pressure onto this Tier 1 tower in the mid lane. All of the other tier ones having already been secured. LGD wanting to take advantage of this timing before the Alchemist really comes online. It's you know a lot of different timings that you need to hit in a game like this, but getting as much done before that out comes online is important. Yeah, it doesn't require a whole lot for that mid tower either. Just the Weaver and the Terror Blade. Uh, maybe just walks into the wave up top, and Ramses is forced to just run away. Doesn't really want to waste his ultimate. And uh, he'll have the Blink Dagger now, so probably a smoke play coming here. In fact, it'll just be a Moonlight Shadow, but it's all around this Weaver. They see Ame as well, able to find him. The Global comes out in response to that. Boat's still going to hit, but I don't know if they have the follow-up now. With the Moonlight Shadow Runaway, LGD, limited vision in this area. The Snowball save for the moment, away from Ramses, and now chasing forward for more. Somnus is here as well. Chalice doing a good bit of damage. He might end up being brought down. They weren't able to find the kill there on the Wraith King. Solo making space for the rest of his cores to find themselves kills. And it's a bane for a Weaver. You take that every day of the week. Yeah, Ramsey's. Oh, wait, Ramsey's. Oh, uh -oh. He, well, that's just the ulti, but it, yeah. it hurts a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't feel that good. He, he wanted to blink in, I think, and try and get the slow going so the team could follow up. But at that point, they're just running low on everything uh, without a boat to follow. So, yeah, in the end, great trade. And uh, had some good vision in the area there from the dire side, helping to secure that fight. And as you said, they spent a lot on that terror blade, right? You're throwing the boat, you're throwing the fiend's grip, but... In the end, it's still made enough space for them to get the more important kill on that Weaver. And that, that's Chalice's role, right? Where he has to kind of be this front line and nuisance. It's a very tactical game right now from PSG LGD. They don't have this big brawler like a Dragonite or something. Just blink in and be targeted down. They have to play very carefully, using the Global Silence to cover for a bit, using the Weaver to try and distract and annoy, and then also using that Time Lash for the secondary life on him and the Sunder for the secondary life on the Terror Blade. It's a lot of more, uh, working cards here. And Ramsey's does not have his ultimate for another 180 seconds. The snowball forward with all these heroes around him. He is going to be caught and TP's away. Can they break it? It does not look like it. Chalice with the time lapse away. Roger shows up. X Mark, are they really trying to take this fight without the anything? No, they're just buying space. Yeah, maybe considering it just because it was post time lapse and they still had the boat, but they will back away. The shrine's up in five seconds. Could be a good fight for VP if PSG LGD forces. They are looking like they want to force it. The shards block up on another oh. one. It actually pushes him to the high ground. And they spot him out. Oh, the arrow. And unfortunately, FY did not manage to find that snowball to break the TP. Okay, space though. Maybe just kind of shoves in the wave there. Farms much of it. Alright, his Yule Scepter up in towards that Shadow Blade. Wants to be his own threat across the map. Because right now, Ramses has felt very comfortable just sitting on waves, pushing out pretty deep. Not a whole lot of threat to his life. If he goes down once, it's pretty hard for someone like Alina, for example, to kill him a second time. And they're going to smoke right under another ward here from LGD. They find the stun. The boat's going to be there as well. The long duration silence, it's not going to connect. And now the secondary stun hits onto the Alchemist. They're trying to focus down no one. He is starting to drop, but there's the Moonlight Shadow. They have double dust for double the kill. Arrow going to miss. 
what an incredible game of vision from PSG LGD. It seems like every single time they can just go in on that bottom lane because the Observer Ward is standing up and making smoking. You talk about the vision, the sentries down ready for that potential gank. Everything, it's, it's always there. Yeah, they just have a complete read on what Virus Pro are attempting to do in this game. And it means this Alchemist is now just 1,200 gold ahead of a Terra Blade. That is not enough to be feeling comfortable right now for VP. He is still in the grave for a little while now as Ame continues to loom as a larger and larger threat. The Dota buff in probability was right last time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is, this, is a, this is a tough one right now for, for Virtus Pro. How do they get their feet back under him? It's only 3,000 gold. Granted, it's, you know, with an Alchemist on your team, that you're behind that far. Well, what do you do now if you're VP? It's very difficult. They've got a pretty dumb Kunkka who's lost a lot of his in. You know, he's trying his best uh, here, trying to read the instructions, but can't find him on that one. FY, maybe this would be a good start. At least getting a kill onto this tough dust. It's just been a thorn in their side. He really has been. Very irritating. So nice pick up the side of Virtus Pro. Ramsey's will dance it off there. But uh, you look at, like, let's say they're going to dodge fights. Ramsey's went first item Blink Dagger. So he's pretty slow at first. Only has a ring. You know, he just has to hit some Ancients. At least his DD ring will give him a hand. He needs to get him towards that armlet. And so all of this time for the Terror Blade, it's just this gap that's not supposed to be there. Uh, it should be so much larger for no one. And Ame just looks terrifying. It really is just that monster. Well, maybe also getting closer and closer to the Shadow Blade. It does sort of feel like right now it's you, you would want to be, I guess, continuing to keep the pressure on a little bit with Virtus. I guess that with the, the Alchemist Radiance now, he can try and just sort of fall back and farm. Is that the play? Well, he, he looks like that that's not going to work. He's, he's actually eyeing up. Instead of that Blink Dagger to try and play aggressive and take fights that we've seen so much from these Radiance Alchemists, he is to go for that route when you're a little bit behind, and he's going back towards that old Manta style as he already has the Yasha picked up. And while he's hiding in the trees up top with his uh, Radiance turned off, LGD are taking Roche. Yeah. So I, I don't think they have quite the same read on this game that LGD do. Man, LGD going to make it happen. They do smoke up now for Virtus Pro, but it might be a little bit too late as Roche is going to fall into the hands of Ame. And if, if they continue... take this fight this could turn south very quickly yeah and solo decides we're gonna back up reset yeah, but roger was also waiting nearby because he wants to try and find just like one good pick he is a kunkka you know they can get this very long range kill back themselves away they're gonna attempt to do it with a moonlight shadow that doesn't look like there's a sentry here is wearing off yeah again they spot out that this could potentially be coming their direction they shard the cliff and then they Radiance back away very again disciplined play coming from psg lgd and every time you look at this 2k lead, you just have to remember there's an Alchemist on the enemy team. So this is worse than it looks. 18 minutes, the immediate D ward. Can we say enough about XL was warding? I know. It's unbelievable at this point. Feels like VP cannot get any sort of a foothold on this top half of the map right now. 13 to 8. And Virtus Pro sending multiple heroes up to the top side. Nova still holding on to Global. They're walking right on top of a ward. And they do not realize this as Chalice is ready to chase down if they so desire, but it does look like Solo is going to be left alone. Are they going to decide to go on him? I think they spotted that rotation coming as well. FY in the area. They're going to snowball for this kill and not able to do almost anything. Another, oh, actually not a minus three. Didn't get there in time from Nova, but now they can pressure in as three here. You have a Terra Blade farming the jungle. You have Alina who just picked up a Shadow Blade coming on the Courier. Uh, maybe could try and connect up top with them if they want to rotate down and uh, grab a couple kills. But no real threat right now for LGD. They can just kind of relax here, knowing that they have this Aegis to play around. So buy space for no one. Is that still just the game plan right now for Virtus Pro, if at all possible? Uh, at some point, they, they need to fight, but it looks like Ramsey is set on having that blade mail first. Okay. And that, that could be something that could turn this around, right? There's uh, no BKB yet for the Lina. And maybe he's going to be building into it first because he's starting to see that that's really the only option they have to kill him. Much better BKB game than last game for him. Only has the Fiend's Grip this time to worry about. No black holes, and he can take care of things like the Kunkka and the Marana. Lots of magical damage as well as what would be thrown back from that blade mail, so... A Yule Scepter forced out here for Pasha. Some way to deal with the silence, but it means that he can't really go into any sort of damage for himself. And they are going to smoke up here 
This time, it won't be directly scouted necessarily. There was an illusion in the area from Ame. Oh, takes that rune. But the arrow's already gone. Ah, no follow-up right now either. They realize where all of VP is and that smoke not going to amount to a kill, it looks like. And it looks like they just got all four bounty runes here to the side of LGD. Clinical. That, you definitely need that as an elf team. And no one wants to find the stun here onto Chalice. Time lapse. There is still an X that's going to catch him. The global is going to be there. The boat is still going to connect at the end of it. So they find themselves a kill on no one. That's the beginning. Yes, very good to take down Chalice like that and give no one a little bit of gold. So keep those up. They want to keep the ball rolling. They're moving through. Solo heads the Niner. He finds the correct one. This time we have the arrow, but he stops oh, it. Oh, the trade over with the Manta. Great play. And the snowball save as well. Following for more. Roger is going to die here, it looks like, as they do have the vision to take him down. X Nova running away. The Yule to dodge. Still in to hit there onto X Nova, who is going to fall. Meanwhile, going to point out onto no one. Still jumping out of there. They can't get the stunner up. He yes. still does have the Aegis. Solo found that big kill with the Fiend's Grip. Now coming back up. They will miss with the arrow. And they're chasing forward. They have the snowball. Fly looking for that opening. It's just going to walrus punch solo there. And the light strike ray going to connect. Now, can they find any more LGD looking to continue this? Fly, Fly wants it. He throws a long bomb, but the Hail Mary won't connect. And uh, they will just settle for this tier two tower. So it looks like with five acts and everything for the side of the Radiant, relatively even fight. But VP did take down that Aegis. Unfortunately, there was only about a minute left on it anyway. However, it is still just an instance where they're not falling further behind. Only a 3,000 gold lead. 16 to 10. We're 21 minutes into this one and what's felt like just a bloodbath. It's continuing to seem like it's gonna go that way. Chalice picking up the Diffusal Blade now. Burning through mana of the Wraith King. Obviously really important. Make sure he can't get that ultimate off. And going for the BKB next. I mean, yeah. around these BKB timings, that's normally where teams try to want to end the game. Is that what they're looking to do for LGD? I think um, it just makes sense with their lineup because they don't have that traditional frontliner that all three of the heroes have to buy this BKB. So it's not necessarily a requirement for going high ground so much as it is a requirement for just not throwing away your lead. Okay. And there's that Blink Dagger now picked up here for no one. So this is where they can try and get aggressive in sync with the Blade Mail. This is the best timing for Virtus Pro. Try and find some good engagements. Solo. Revision. Go with the Nightmare yet again. The shards a little bit off the mark that time, and with the rotation coming from Kunkka, they will not commit any more heroes to this gank in the woods. And Aegis having expired, already been used up in that last fight by Ame. It does feel like PSG LGD are going to be waiting for the next rush before they really go for a big team fight. There's the lift up there. Arrow afterwards connects onto the silencer. Diffusal blade out. No one shows up. Wants to take this fight possibly. Can they? They can't even finish the silencer. They're not sure what's happening on the side of LGD, but the reinforcements are actually quite far away. They are showing up though. And X Nova, <laughs> all the illusions chasing him, feels pretty bad right now to be a silencer. But wait, he might get out. Is he actually going to be able to walk away from this? Has a TP as well. And now Ramses is kind of in an awkward spot. Do they realize where he's at? The sigil. It spots him out, and Ramses is going to be caught. And blocks the blade mail. Tries oh. to turn this, but it does look like eventually, again, the Wraith King will be found. X Nova wants that minus two. Get over here, buddy. He's sticking around. They bullied him earlier, but they eventually take the kill. 17 to 10 now, a 4K lead. LGD, are we gonna get a second 2-0? Can they keep this going? That's a real question. BP looked pretty defeated after game one. They've fallen back on an Alchemist. All this pressure on no one. And what was their first foray, really, with the Blink Dagger, did not go very successfully. Yeah, I mean, um, eventually you do talk about, like, the damage mitigation that comes in from the Radiance Mischance, all of these things working in consort to try and mess with the ter Terra Blade, but it just doesn't feel like they're at that point right now uh, to be able to fight against the pressure that's coming. And you see this right here. How many feeling comfortable pressing oh, this far forward while well, the smoke is going no on? One. And they're looking for him. Find him immediately. There's going to be the Yule Scepter. Can they follow it up? Snowball, Walrus Punch. They have the Spear Vessel. He's not regening. He's dying. They even throw the ulti to secure, but Pasha still rotates in here. He's all alone. Is he really trying to take this? They actually might be able to make this work, though. Uh, the Silence is going to be there as well. Pasha's dead from Zombies as well. They buy back on the Mirana. X Nova chasing forward on no HP, but FY is going to be there as well. And there's the Laguna Blade onto the Kunkka. Does not even get to cast his ship as Ramsey's also being ran at LGD. What are you doing? You're just tearing at him. They're going for the armor toggle, but it's not enough. They take down the bottom tier three tower. Ame can came with it. 
got so much space. They actually might be able to kill off this terribly, but oh, is but he going to get out of there? Combo. They've got it. No one in trouble. It's dead yet again. LGD running over the corpses of Virtus Pro. I think uh, last game the buybacks weren't there. This time they were for Virtus Pro, but they were not used in the best possible way. And you can hear the adoration from the crowd right now. A huge win right here as they are taking down the first set of barracks 25 minutes into this game. 13,000 gold lead for LGD. Um, one set of racks versus an alchemist draft. It's not the end here for Virtus Pro, but a 13k gold lead versus an alchemist. Things are looking fantastic here for PSG LGD. They just retreat back. Some real scribbles across the map from Ramsey, as you can see. I think uh, declaring that their half's just not safe. They pick up this Blink Dagger as well on the Tusk now for more of those snowball saves. And, I mean, if you're Virtus Pro at this point, like, it, it doesn't really feel like there's a plan B. They're kind of in it right now, and they just have to sort of battle their way out of it, it feels like. Such a clear game plan from PSG LGD around this terribly. Have you ever really felt like Ame was threatened? Not really. That was the closest he came to dying, and he was versus like three heroes. With the rest of the team on the other side of the map, he takes a tier three by himself, and then the reinforcements arrive. They have given him so much room here. Again, it does come back to that vision. You just can't ignore it. He always knows what Virtus Pro is up to. Speaking of vision, after Roche responds, 10 seconds later, LGD are in the pit. Starting to take it down for what could potentially be. They have to fight this. There's no choice, but remember, the buybacks are limited for Virtus Pro. None on at all any of the heroes for Virtus Pro. Roger, the only one that's even close. And the arrow's gonna go out. It's gonna connect on Illusion. Ramsey's now they in. know there's the Yule Scepter lift up. They do have a global stone if they want to use it possibly. It's gonna be dropped down, but they have the Aegis. It's on the Terrorblade, chasing for more. They bring down X Nova low, but he's still not dead. He does finally fall. Can they kill off Roger? It is gonna happen. And now can they chase for any more? Ramsey's still diving into this one. He goes for the snowball. There's going to be a Fiend's Grip onto the Terrorblade, trying to kill him off. The Blade Mouth's still going for Ramsey's as they lay into him. And now uh, there's the Reflection coming out as well. They do bring him down one time, but it comes at the cost of the Wraith King's first life as well. It's back up and he's just all on his own. The team is abandoning Ramsey's and trying to arm Otago's way out of this. It's not going to happen. He does take down Chalice. Not a bad kill there. Solo also being killed off as well, though. And three dead. That's the age is down. The very least. Ends up being a relatively even trade across the board there. But once you add in the fact that the, uh, the Aegis was uh, taken as well as the cheese, they lose the Aegis, but at least they'll get to keep the cheese there on for Ame. Arrow out, no one trying to go for initiation here. This could be good for them, but they can't even kill off the Tusk early. The reflection just so hard to fight into that Radiance that you just get Roger for free. A big play. Oh, and the Manta dodge as well. Not bad from Ame. The boat's gonna hit, but nothing else. Yeah, no arrow follow-up. and Just losing a tower as well, just to this catapult. Everything going wrong here for Virtus Pro. What more can you really say about LGD this game. They've got the BKB now, trying to go for the Assault Grass on the Lina. Getting closer to the Lincoln Sphere as well. One of the main ways that you've seen VP get back into this, at least a little bit when they've been fighting, is a Fiend's Grip onto that Terra Blade. You can take a look at this replay here. Yeah, you see Ramsey, what a play here by, uh, I, can't tell, I believe it was maybe, or just wheels him up in the air. He's grabbed him. Made sure he couldn't initiate for the Age of Steel. At this point, too, going forward through every subsequent fight, they're going to have that reflection cooldown on the Terrorblade. And they found themselves going yet again. There is not an answer in the world for that. That Spirit Vessel is just such a strong counter at this point when you're able to catch up to an Alchemist like this. Can't get into a BKB in time. Still so far right now for Rams or for no one. If they go back to the Shrine. Oh, thank you, team. Tom is just still hitting neutrals. He's, he's doing it. He's fine with that. They do throw out the boat. This is one of the nice parts about Kunkka at this stage in the game, at the very least, is that you can push out creep waves very quickly because of that low cooldown. They're going to need it. As, oh, Pasha, yet again, found, lifted up. There's going to be the Light Strike Array. Hits while he's going through the air. The Walrus punch the Snowball. Going forward for more. And Pasha in trouble. Gets the Yule Sucker lift off. Living and the oh. not going to be there. That's a Twinkle Toes. Pasha. Finds a bit of time, right? 
The wave dies and the tower lives for about 10 more seconds. But that's 10 more seconds for no one to try and get back up here with no buyback. And now he'll have enough gold for the BKB if they want to try one last hurrah using that. Yeah, they need to win a fight, it feels like. Drawing even at this point does not feel good enough. And it's even tough drawing even. And yeah, methodical play here from PSG LGD. They already took down the top shrine. They move on to the bottom. Nice there from Ramses comes in, secures his team. A little bit of extra gold. They do what they need to get into those BKBs instead. But it's actually going to be the Alk queuing up a Shiva's guard now instead. Okay. Such a hard game at this point. 19,000 gold lead when you're on an Alchemist. This hero balanced about around being ahead. Looks like no one's just trying to find some sort of an answer to these uh, terribly illusion tests. <laughs> Solo will actually nightmare him to stop the self-stun. What a great teammate. Oh, yeah. But again, LGD coming in to the main event, you know, being able to sustain against the pressure that was coming from BP in game number one and then come back with a performance like this in game number two. Very impressive stuff as they thought about going on Ramsey's, but he's not an easy target to take down. I don't know how he feels about it. Not only is the lead much larger in this game, it's just not the same sort of mechanics for a comeback situation. They're still at tier one in the mid lane right now for the side of LGD. Yeah. You know, that, that whole march down mid after a one team fight, non easy situation right now for the Radiant to, uh, or rather for a uh, first pro to try and achieve. And buybacks are still there right now for everyone except for the Lena. They finish off the Shiva's guard, trying to send the courier around the way to secure that one back for Virtus Pro. They're sending it the very, very long way, but it does have the Shiva's guard on it. Invisibility. And they're just holed up in their base right now. This means that you can get so much farm around the rest of the map with the rest of the heroes of LGD. Sometimes it can be a little bit dangerous because you have to sort of push out all the side lanes and that might leave somebody else open, but yeah, you can see 97% is pretty Radiant good. Are scanning. Scan just to make sure Pasha actually left up top, but he is back where he belongs, hiding away here. So LGD look to close this one out again, just a slow play, just building up some more defensive items here, looking for a Lincoln Sphere for Chalice, and uh, FY using this gem just to uh, fully secure the vision, as well as thinking about getting himself a Scythe if he can get there. Down in their eyes, crossing their T's. That is the real Ramsey down there, and Ame just boldly runs at him. Does not have a care in the world right now. Cheese, BKB, everything. If they find a pickoff here, great. But honestly, they can just wait till the next Roche also if they want to. With Invision, the Sentry and Observer Ward combo give them pretty good details as to what's happening. But with that gem, it does mean that it's going to be that much less likely that they're going to be able to keep that vision up. And they're going to have to play in the dark. Yeah, I'm sure FY is just itching for it right now, but he will play patiently. As much as he can see these Virtus Pro heroes, he'd rather they actually left the base. They know they need to win some sort of a massive fight. So eventually, Virtus Pro are going to feel forced to come out, whether it's the next Roche fight or if they want to try a sneaky smoke play after a big item pickup. It's probably their best chance to get into it. Absolutely. And again, just every time you walk out, they can't even finish off a whole creep wave because they don't feel confident because immediately LGD is there and potentially just going to blow one of them up. I, I do think that this is a really nice part about the blade mail pickup for Ramses. If he didn't have that item, Odds are they would just try and kill him every time, but he at least can go out there. Maybe try and burn his ultimate or something, but they're yeah. just not allowing any sort of a response coming out from Virtus Pro because there are good counter initiation heroes. Like Kunk is not the fastest counter initiator, but when you have an entire reincarnation to work around, it gives good opportunities for Roger to maybe find a couple stuns with the boat, and maybe that'll get enough space for the big Shiva's guide from no one, and suddenly you you killed one hero and you can run down this fight. We are still dealing with a tricor that isn't that traditional sense of having like someone relatively tanky as Solo will finally get caught on a mission here. Arrow flying out as well. VP, they're okay. going to buy back on Solo. And there's the Diffusal Blade on the Pasha, forcing out the leap. The stun is going to connect. They have the X. The Torrent is going to be off the mark, though. Now it's Arrow Blade. Just walks in bold as brass and will throw out that reflection, daring them to come and fight. Yeah, and you can see, again, very disciplined play here from PSG LGD. They don't chase at all, even though they have some pretty high mobility. Oh, there's going to be the stun going out again. Locked for the moment. They still are tearing into the tower solo with nowhere really left to go, and he's going to get punched to death. Ame 
striking forward and asserting dominance over the captain of Virtus Pro, who bought back, so they don't have this Bane in the next fight. And it might not even be a fight, to be honest, the way that this is going. LGD just walking over them. No one trying to get it back with the Shiva's guard. Slow down this pressure that's coming. But this looks like it's going to be the second set of racks. And GG is called. Eventually, LGD stop over them. That was an emphatic victory from LGD. They never...